Hello students, how are you? Hope you people are doing well and are going through your online videos properly. Well, here in this module I have been here to teach you another chapter transportation in animal and plants through this upcoming video. Introduction It is lunch time. Preeti's family is at the dining table. Preeti looks at her plate and frowns. Her mother has served her spinach and she hates it. Preeti's mother directs her to eat it as it is good for her body. Preeti wonders how the food she eats reaches different part of her body. In this lesson, we will discuss the process of transportation of oxygen, nutrients and wastes from one part of the body to the other part. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you will be able to List the components of blood Describe the different types of blood vessels Explain the structure of heart Describe the functioning of heart Define heartbeat and heart rate Understand the functioning of excretory system Rahul participates in 100 meters race at his school while running, he falls down and hurts himself. Blood oozes out of the wound for a while and then clots. His curiosity is aroused. He wants to know how it happened. Blood is a fluid that is essential for our survival. It carries oxygen and nutrients to body parts. It also carries waste away from body parts for removal. Blood consists of blood cells floating in a fluid called plasma. Plasma is yellow in color. 90% of it is water. Besides water, plasma contains hormones, proteins, glucose and carbon dioxide. There are three types of blood cells. Red blood cells, RBCs, white blood cells, WBCs and platelets. RBCs are also known as erythrocytes. They are disc-shaped. They contain a protein called hemoglobin which is rich in iron and gives the blood its red color. Hemoglobin transports oxygen to different parts of the body. WBCs are also known as leukocytes. They come in many different shapes. They produce antibodies to fight the germs entering the body. Platelets. Platelets are also known as thrombocytes. They are oval in shape. They facilitate the clotting of blood. Once when Rahul was unwell, his doctor recommends a blood test. The technician collecting blood samples first checks for a particular kind of blood vessel to prick and collect the blood. Is there more than one type of blood vessel? Yes. There are three types of blood vessels in our body. Arteries, veins and capillaries. Arteries are blood vessels with thick walls. They carry oxygenated blood from the heart to all the other parts of the body. Arteries are of two types. Systemic arteries. They carry oxygenated blood from the heart to the other parts of the body. Pulmonary arteries. They carry deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs. Veins are blood vessels with thin walls. They are close to the skin. They carry deoxygenated blood from the different parts of the body to the heart. Most veins have flaps known as venous valves that ensure that blood flows only towards the heart. These valves prevent the blood from flowing back. The pressure of blood in the veins is lower than it is in the arteries. Veins are of two types. Systemic veins. They carry deoxygenated blood from the different body parts to the heart. Pulmonary veins. They carry oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart. Arteries branch into smaller blood vessels called arterioles which further branch into capillaries. Capillaries are extremely thin blood vessels that are embedded in the tissues. They carry the oxygenated blood from the arteries to the tissues. The oxygen in the RBCs and the waste from the tissues are exchanged through the capillary walls. 
the capillaries carrying the deoxygenated blood join to form venules, which in turn join to form veins. The veins then carry the deoxygenated blood back to the heart. Heart is a muscular organ located slightly to the left of the middle in the chest cavity. It is the size of a human fist. It is responsible for pumping blood to different parts of the body. It is enclosed in a protective sac called pericardium. The heart is divided into four chambers. The two chambers at the top are known as the left atrium and the right atrium. The two chambers at the bottom are known as the left ventricle and the right ventricle. The muscle called septum divides the left side from the right side of the heart. The right side of the heart pumps deoxygenated blood received from the other parts of the body into the lungs for purification. The left side of the heart pumps oxygenated blood received from the lungs to the rest of the body. The heart pumps blood through a rhythmic pattern of relaxation and contraction. When the heart relaxes, the heart is filled with blood. When it contracts, the blood is pumped out of the heart. One rhythmic relaxation and contraction of the heart is known as a heartbeat. The number of heartbeat per minute is known as the heart rate. The human heart beats about 70 to 80 times per minute in a healthy adult. Vanita comes home after jogging. She is covered in sweat. Her mother asks her to take a bath. Why? Sweat is a waste that must be removed from the body. You just learned that blood collects waste from different parts of the body. These wastes are carbon dioxide, water, salt, urea and uric acid. They are the result of the metabolic activities of the body. Since they are toxic, they must be removed from the body. The process of removal of wastes resulting from metabolism is called excretion. Excretion takes place through the lungs, skin, liver and kidneys. The lungs remove carbon dioxide from the body during exhalation. The skin removes excess water, salt, urea and uric acid from the body in the form of sweat. The liver removes the chemicals from the blood. It secretes a juice called bile which carries waste from the liver into the intestine. Kidneys are bean shaped and two in number. They filter blood coming from different parts of the body. During this process, useful substances are absorbed back into the blood and the waste is removed as urine. The urine goes into the urinary bladder through tube-like ureters. It is stored in the urinary bladder and is passed out through the urinary opening at the end of a muscular tube called urethra. What an interesting video to learn about the transportation in animals or in human beings. Well, in the upcoming video, we would be learning about transportation in plants and its excretion.